Hi guys. Um, today I'm going to be working with dark fabric, dark material, and I'm going to be showing you how to make it look older without jumping through hoops and sanding and finding all sorts of materials you don't know where to get. We're going to get started. Actually, you know, my first step should be to not be wearing a brand new hoodie. One second. Yeah, are these jeans? That's fine. That's fine. But yeah, don't wear new clothes while you're painting. Step one. Don't put paint in your water cup. Step two. Old stains. There we go. So today I've got this plain old Velcro pouch that I don't actually have the arm strength to open right now. Here. There we go. Um, it came off the tack vest. Very typical what you're going to find in a military store. But it obviously looks very, very new, which is not what we want. Um, what I'm going to be using today is literally shitty gray paint. Like, this is like the, the, the 99 cent for the giant bottles shit gray paint. Um, you can also use white, but you have to be a little bit more careful with it. Not quite as aggressive. As for what kind of paintbrush, uh, you can literally use a chip brush um, for this specifically. You know, I have old brushes that I've completely fucking trashed that used to be decent quality, but now I've have so much paint dried into it that they uh, barely work. It's perfect for this. Um, as long as it's not like rock hard, that's not gonna do any good. <laughs> I don't have the arm strength. Damn it. Okay, I got it. You can see how old this paint is because it's dying. Alright. As I immediately drop my gray paint. Didn't even hit the carpet. Ha ha ha. Victory. And the nice thing about when you're genre is if you get paint everywhere, you can just smear it on your project. If you've got something like this that has a lot of texture, it's actually way easier to get the genre effect. Um, because you can use this to your advantage. So I have some gray paint. I'm literally going to smear it. I usually use this part of my hand. You can use a palette like an adult, but I don't. And basically get as much paint off as you can. Um, and you can kind of test on the edge a little bit to see how much you've got. And generally what you're going to want to do is use the edges to your advantage. You're not going to see any difference yet because camera quality. But over time, it, it's a lot easier to go really, really light and layer it on than it is to try to, you know, do one of these things or get whole splotches. Like there, I got a little bit too much of a splotch, but some of it may bleed in some. But you see what I'm doing here is actually putting it really, really heavily onto the edges. I'm almost wiping the paint off of, with, with the edges, so when the brush goes over the rest of it, it's lighter. You can already see on that tab where I put it on really heavy, it barely looks like anything at this point. And that's what you're gonna do until your desired effect is here. So that time I went a little heavier because this material is absorbing. Sometimes you'll get a polyester or some other material that doesn't absorb and your paint will just sit on top of it and that's why you want to start really really light. But right there where it looks like it's just weird lighting is actually aging. I like this pocket because it's got the three that I compare it to. So I can actually show you guys what's going on. If you end up with material like it is down here, I'll get I'll get down to it a little bit. You can use even these folds to your advantage um, because those get more exposure to getting bumped, getting rubbed, um, generally more sunlight. You're not going to get as much sun bleaching in these deep crevices. And the good thing is, even if you do make a mistake and make it like that, if you catch it early enough, you can either blend it in or you can find some black paint and go over it. That's the magic about paint is you can cover it up, usually, um, unless you've royally messed something up, in which case, I don't know, I'm not a painter. I, I, just, I just work here. So I'm putting more and more layers on this whole way around. 
And the funny part is, if I were to just show you this, it doesn't look like I've really done anything. Like, it just looks like whatever, weird, weird lighting or whatever. Putting it next to new ones, you can actually see how much it's showing. Here you can use those inside edges to catch a little more highlight. So for just if you are brand new to doing things, genreing, making things look older, that that's that will add so much to your kit. Just doing that to all your blacks, to all your all your deep deep black colors. Because when you get this this pitch black color on your kit. It, it looks new. You can't really do it, help it unless it's unless it's like a leather, but even then edges fade. You know, friction will burn stuff down, whatever the case may be. It's hard to make dark black color look old. So you have to do something to it, even if it's just as simple as that. You know, that took me how long have I been streaming? Maybe five, six, seven minutes. Mind you, that's just a little pocket, but for larger surfaces, it doesn't actually take that much longer. Hear me. You know, I did my chest armor, and again, it has these crevices that I was able to sink into. Obviously, I, I added a little more detail into the crevices to add, you know, dust texture or whatever, but it was still just super quick. That looks like trash on the video, but that's okay. I'm also lost focus. Wake up, camera. Nope, it's just, it's just out of focus. That's cute. Um, but bigger surface areas aren't really going to make any difference. You're gonna have the same... Really, bud? Oh, oh, we almost got in focus. There we go, we're back! <laughs> but yeah, the larger surface areas aren't going to take you that much longer. Um, as long as you have these crevices to work with, it's super easy peasy. Or at least some kind of texture. Um, which everything is gonna have some kind of edge unless it's like a loose, soft t-shirt. So we're just taking some of that off and brushing it back on. I accidentally went a little heavy there, so we'll cover it up. Keep smearing it. Worst case scenario, you can cover it up with black paint and start over. Um, you don't want to put a thick layer of black paint over it, because you're gonna end up losing this canvas texture and it being paint. Um, you see, even though I've put several layers on, it's still canvassy. And that's without watering anything down. When using the edges, even if you don't have, you know, these, if you've got these folds here, you could do the same thing and use those edges to your advantage for shading. Because areas that have not been, you know, this, this crevice here, it might catch more dust, but it's not gonna catch the same amount of sun. And dust is a little bit different texture, but similar effect. Um, this by itself doesn't look like I've done hardly anything to it. Um, and I can keep layering on, layering on, layering on until I'm happy with it. But the, the main thing is going really, really, really light. I'm wiping almost all the paint off on my hand before I'm brushing it on there. So you see how much lighter that is, even though when you do this, it doesn't look like I've done to it. But yeah, using these folded edges to your advantage, you can get, oh, that was a lot of paint, a lot more texture. You can see how not careful I am. Even if you get it to pop out some, you're getting a little bit of a different texture. And you can go through and cover some of it up if, it, if it's a little bit too blatant, like I've got these sharp lines, I can cover that up. When it comes to just doing this light um, sun bleaching layer, I generally don't do watering down. If I'm if I'm doing a dark paint on a light, I water down everything. But that's a little different. When it comes to putting light on dark, I can get away with it being almost dry brushed on. So yeah, here I ended up with too sharp of an angle using those, so I can cover that up. But you can still see the outlines of where it was at. So, there's this guy. It doesn't look like anything special, but compared to dark dark, it makes a huge difference. 
if you do sanding and stuff prior and then do the gray paint on top, it ends up even better. I can show you white. Wrist strength. Wrist strength. There we go. But take care of your paints. Don't be like me. So this is actually really crappy white paint, and I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, Craft Smart. Uh, it's it's completely see through. Like you have to put like eight layers on anything for it to work. But it works for genre. If you want something to actually look white, it's not worth. It. You're better off using uh, fabric paint. If you're concerned about acrylic washing out, you don't need to because it's plastic. You're literally putting plastic on your clothing. Fabric paint is better for anything that's flexible. Fabric paint is going to be better for loose fabrics. Um, so shirts, belt flags if you have those, um, anything that is going to be flapping around. Fabric paint 100% um, because it's more flexible, it doesn't crack, um, it doesn't fade as much. Cheapo acrylic works just fine if you're genre and shit. Especially if you're putting on this light, it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, the less pigment, honestly, might be better, depending on what you want. So you see he's got, but he took, looks like knives to it, looks like he burned some of it, sandpaper probably. Um, also the cat was scratching it a lot and using it as a scratching post, which works just fine. <laughs> so this is just a regular old tech vest. So you can see he did some of the color on the outside, but none here, so I'll show you dead center. White paint, because white paint works just as well. So I'm using the same brush, I'm not even washing it out. Um, this is what I do with my trash genre brushes. That, that's how I end up with these trash textures. <laughs> you can tell this one was used for blood. It's fine, this is fine. So literally same thing. With white, I'm gonna go way, way lightweight on it and barely touch it to test it out. So you can already see how heavy that is in comparison to the gray. Even though this is basically the same texture. So just keep wiping it out, testing it, and go super, super light. And you can see how very, very quickly the white ends up bringing out all the edges compared to the gray. So you have to be very careful if you're using white instead of the gray. And as long as you're consistent across the whole piece, it won't matter as much. If I were to use gray in part of it and white in part of it, it would be very, very obvious. Um, especially because the gray has a blue base, I believe. Most grays have a blue base, sometimes you get a brown base one, but you'll get a whole different color scale. I don't know. Again, I'm not a painter. I just work here. You can use the edges of these. To have a little bit of a dynamic edge to it, rather than making it all the same color. Ah, see there. Went too heavy. But sometimes you can pull it out by scratching it, apparently. So yeah, here you can see, if you put that paint over stuff that's already been genre and chopped up, whatever, it actually pulls out those bits more than, you know, the parts down here. You can't really see, other than the cat hair, a lot of the cuts and sandpaper edges, blah blah blah. Well, this pulls it all out and ages it. Again, I put on a little heavy, but you can you can spread it out. If you get the whole thing done and don't feel like it's quite popping out enough, you can try a little light and just touch the edges. And sometimes that will be enough. But again, very very careful with white or water it down. Try not to get the brush strokes in it. You can use more circular motions, or uh, if you dry brush enough, it won't get streaky. But as easy as that. You know, just just this pocket took what five ten minutes technically. So easy peasy. If you do it right, it won't like look like you did it enough. You're not gonna want splotches of the color, anything like that. If you're just doing the sun bleaching, that that's all you need. That that is already looking old compared to the brand new tech pocket, whatever the hell this is. So I hope that uh, helped you guys out. Super, super simple. 
to put in five, ten minutes of work with less than five bucks of materials to make your stuff not look brand new. Um, I will hopefully be doing more of these tutorials in the coming future. We'll see. I don't know. I never know. But if I do, I hope to see you guys next time.